Welcome to Slinging the Slang, the video podcast where we take a look at our everyday idiom, slang, jargon, everything from the funny to the absolutely ridiculous, including origins and meanings. I'm Slangman David Burke, author of 30 books on popular idioms and slang. And I'm Monica Mauro, Director of Education for a private English language school in Southern California and a lifelong lover of slang. And if this is the first time you're joining us, are you in luck? We're going to have a lot of fun. Here is our format. Monica never has any idea about the, the subject matter, what I'm going to be talking about, even the questions I'm going to ask her, which always makes it nice and fun and usually surprises her and usually shocks me with her answers. And um, we do invite your tweets, of course. Tweet us at Slingin' the Slang. We'd love to hear from you, hear what you have to say. Um, okay, we're going to get right into our topic. It is, as you can probably tell, the holiday. That is why we are decked out. And to, really, and to really emphasize that it is a holiday, Monica, why don't you take a sip of whatever you're drinking, show us your mug. Oh, my mug. I don't mean face. My it's just like, beautiful course, course, face. mug that my mother gave me. <laughs> Matches well, my it, nails. Oh, well, I, I, I should hope so. So you are, you are definitely decked out and ready for this week's subject, oh. which is, of course, holiday slang. So first, I'm going to give you a little bit of, uh, I guess this is trivia, but in the form of a Love question. So, so Monica... If I may be so bold as to call you Monica. Okay, during the medieval times in Europe, it was common for the wealthy to eat not turkey, but a different type of meat. What was that meat, Monica? The first, the first fowl that comes to my mind is pheasant. Okay, wow, you're not you're not that far off. It kind of looks like a pheasant, but it's a bigger bird. A lot bigger. That's really, really colorful. A peacock? A peacock. Oh, yes. no. <laughs> Don't eat peacock. I know. Stop it. Well, actually, they did stop it. Um, so here's what happened. Um, okay. So it all changed in the 16th century with Henry the Sixth. No, seventh. Seventh. It was the Henry the Seventh who decided, you know what? He had your attitude. Peacock, what? He decided, let's all eat turkey. So he is the reason, thank you, uh, Henry the Sixth, or says Seventh, who changed everyone's eating habits from peacock to turkey. So there you go. Peacocks. Oh. I know. I know. But you could say that with any animal, couldn't you? Oh, cow. Oh. oh I mean, it's so know. disappointing. I know. They're so pretty. Why would <laughs> you want to eat a peacock? Well, and the feathers get in your teeth. Well, I guess you could use them as toothpicks. At, at, to... Okay. So um, in the news... <laughs> In the speaking news, of, yes. What's going on in the news, David? Well, okay. So the top five list of slang associated with the holidays. Oh. Let's see if you know what these mean because they're pretty interesting. Okay. Do you know what this is? And it's being used now. Number one. Yes. I'm going to try one. not to pantomime it out so you can't really guess what it is. I'll just sit here. What is... <laughs> Rap, W R A P, not like yo yo, but rap rage. It's not angry about rap music, no. Rap rage. Wait a minute, are you saying R O C K? No, no, rap, as in I'm rapping a present for you. Oh, w -R -A -P. Rap, rap rage. Oh, okay. So rap rage is when you just can't stand to wrap another present and you just it's, rip it all to pieces and throw it everywhere. Because that's what I do every year because I hate to wrap. You know what? You are absolutely correct in the opposite direction. It's it's hating having to unwrap gifts. Gifts hating that are difficult. to unwrap gifts. But gifts that are difficult to unwrap. You know how sometimes... Instead of just scotch tape, they have like like twine, and twine doesn't give. You have to unwrap. I twine love it when it's hard to unwrap because that just makes the anticipation, you know, that elongates. That you know, the duration oh. of the anticipation is longer, and so it's so much fun when you can't and you start getting really excited and you start just like you know, get a knife. That's you oh, know, or, get a knife. You would hate me. I'd be the I'd be the guy reaching over, going, "Let me try," and you'd be like slapping slapping my hand away. No, I would be. I'd try to help you unwrap the gift. Well, that is rap rage. You're just. You, can't stand it. You can't open it fast enough. In your case, maybe it's rap 
ecstasy. You yes. like Rap unwrapping the gift. Ecstasy. Yeah, I like that. Well, here's another one. Oh, uh, okay. I, I may have to spell this because I, I, I it sounds really strange. <clears throat> elfed. Elfed. Like, I, I'm an elf, but the past tense of oh, it. Oh, elfed. elfed. Yeah, elfed. Oh, yes. elfed. Um, elfed. Uh, Context uh, example? Will Farrell just came into your home? I, I thought the same thing. You've been elfed. Oh, okay. You've been elfed. It's Will. <laughs> if I said to you, who elfed your house? Wow, look at your house. Somebody must have elfed it. Oh, did they did they maybe put toilet paper everywhere? No, it's it's a nice thing. Oh, they decorated they your decor house? They decorated it. They elfed it. Well, they who didn't, does they, that? They, I wish they, someone would come and decorate my house. You see, they, they didn't they didn't elf it up. They, yes, I they, want to be elfed. Oh, Can they, someone elf my house? They, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, after the show, I'll, I'll make sure to give everyone your address and your phone number. Really, call her anytime, but preferably after two in the morning. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, here's one. Uh, knowing you, you'd be up. Um, okay. What is a donut dasher? Wait a minute. A donut dasher? Yep, these are all Christmas terms. Christmas slime. It's someone. It's someone who delivers donuts to your door after they elf your house. Yeah, exactly. Uh, once they were in rap rage, they couldn't stand it anymore, so they went out and. David, do you know donuts house. are my favorite thing in the whole world? That's the like the, the, my. It's my own food group. Mm, donut. Who else loves donuts? Mm. Mm, donuts. Yeah. Homer Simpson. Homer the Simpsons. Simpsons. Homer. Now I want a donut. But every time I talk to you, I always want I always get hungry. We always end up talking about food. Let us know. Tweet us if there's ever a time where we don't end up turning the wheel on whatever subject we're talking about and start talking about food. It's what we do. Oh, in fact, I'm going to do it now. Okay. I may have just given this away, sort of. What does this word mean? Okay. Now, okay, back in the 20s, it meant your head, your noggin. But now it means something else. Um, it means you're drinking too much eggnog. You actually got it right. We need to go out noggin. We're I let's go out noggin. I can oh, go gonna, out noggin right now. I want to go out noggin. I love eggnog. Yeah, see, again, we're talking about food again. Uh okay, oh, this night, okay, this last one. This is not about food, but uh, we'll probably turn it into food. Okay. This has become a verb. Okay. To, uh, and so has the opposite, to winter and to summer. Well, well, it used to be I, I winter in Florida and I summer in the Hamptons. That's exactly it, right? I'm impressed. I didn't know if you were going to get I'm that one. I'm on a one. roll today. You are on a roll. Oh, good slang. See, we just Must be oh, the nog. go right back to the Must slang. Must be the nog in my mug. It's your, it's your, it's your nog and then, and your, the nog in your eating with a donut from the donut dasher. Okay, also in the news. Okay, let's see how well you know your British English slang for the holidays. Oh, uh, I don't and know the, about that. Well, but. I don't know because we do hear these words and I, I wasn't even sure what they meant at first. And we've heard it. Okay, you've heard of figgy pudding, right? What's figgy pudding? What's the what? Figgy. Yeah, fig figgy pudding. Yes. What is figgy pudding? Um, I think figgy pudding is like a fruit cake. Actually, you're wrong. And I'm surprised you're wrong. Um, it's a plum pudding. But pudding, what does pudding mean in Britain? Uh, gosh, let in me England, think. England, pudding is not what you think. Pudding is cake? No, it's a whole well, you're close in that it's a category. After dinner, you have pudding, dessert. Oh, it's so a it's just a, like an umbrella over an umbrella. all things sweet after. Okay, so that explains why what I think of cake is called pudding. It's really, they're just calling it it's just dessert. dessert. It's just dessert. Oh, well, see, see, you learn something new every day, don't you? That's, that's why you people tune in to us to learn something new every day. And that's why you are here. Even I just learned that. You learn something new every day. Oh, in fact, speaking of pudding, which means dessert. So this is something different 
in England, and I noticed this from the Harry Potter movies, uh, one of them in particular, how do people greet each other during Christmas? What do they say in England? Oh, when they greet someone about... Um, about Christmas. Uh, uh, I'll give you a better um, hint. I should give you a better hint. Okay, we happy say... Happy St. Nick Day. You are so close. You're really close. We say Merry Christmas, and in England they say Happy Christmas. Oh, Okay. And the reason being because and then they think of us, the Americans, as being kind of like wild and crazy. So merry, merriment, they think of drinking and acting kind of goofy. Happy yeah. is a little more sedate. We should have a happy Christmas. Not too merry, but happy. Don't get too crazy. Don't get too crazy. Not too merry. Don't get too crazy. Just just be happy. Just be happy. Yeah. Calm down. Curb oh. your enthusiasm. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> speaking of enthusiasm, it's it's a little hard to hear over your sweater so um and i see monica is decked out in a, in a christmas sweater but they don't call it a sweater in england no they, they call, call it a jumper how did you know that one do you have friends in oh because sometimes i get a glimmer of intelligence <laughs> <laughs> no i did not i did not know it was called a jumper yes I, i've it, heard of a jumper before but i just thought i thought it was a dress is it well, a dress? Our idea of a jumper is totally different. Our I, our, our idea of a jumper is, uh, is like a little dress with straps uh, uh, that you wear something underneath. Right. That's what I thought. So I didn't realize it was totally different. Okay. Speaking of totally different, and I'm really nervous to ask you this one. Okay. Monica, uh -oh. you've got to be Now I'm nervous. Oh, you I'm should nervous. be. You, the audience should be nervous with this one. I'm nervous asking you. Now, if, if, the, the people from Canada are going to go, this is what? That's, this is a normal question. Same thing in England. In England... What is this dessert? A spotted dick. Be careful. <gasps> um, Let this not be oh, our last show ever. Spotted oh my gosh. Dick. It is a, I know this. I know this because I read about this in like the Food Network. Um, okay, you're going in the right direction. I thought, I, no, but now I have, have to remember. Visual. But now I have to remember. Uh, I was laughing so hard that I think I laughed it out of my brain. Um, <laughs> spotted dick, I think it's like, it's a, some kind of cake. Yes. It's and like it's a, got things in it that look like like maybe dried fruit or something that makes it look like it's spotted. Exactly. Currants. Little currants and dried fruit. And some spotted dick. It comes in a can. At least that's how I've seen it. It says spotted dick. I mean, the first time I saw it, I'm like, all right. Um, it is sometimes made with fish oil. Fish oil. That I don't quite get, but who am I to get it? So... Very good. I'm, I am. I'm not saying anything, David. I'm just. So we're still on the air. I really thought this was going to be our last show. I really, I thought I'm going to ask Monica this, and we're done. Um, oh, wait, we're not done. We have a tweet. Woo oh, okay. tweet! Yay! There, there's a tweet coming in from holiday tweet. Holiday tweet. Oh, holiday tweet from Oliver. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Oliver from France, or is that? Oh, Olivier from France. Sorry, Olivier. Olivier from France. From France, he says, "Why do Americans say there is a nip?" In the air, what does that mean? Okay, that's holiday, winter, slang. Well, there is a nip in the air today. There is a nip. Okay, wait. We're from Los Angeles. Monica's probably talking about the 70-degree weather. That's our nip in the air. If it gets below 65, I don't know if I mentioned this, Monica, but did I tell you that I always thought a sweater, I grew up thinking a sweater was something you wear when your mother is cold. That's how I grew up, so... If it's below 65 degrees, I'd have to put on my sweater because my mom was cold. Okay, so why do we say a nip in the air? What does it mean? Well, it's it's like it, there's a bite in the air. There, it, it's very crisp. It's it's chilly. I just, my mouth just dropped open because in the, in the 16th century, it was coined as meaning a bite. So you got it exactly right. A bite in the air, and uh, oh, and also. A nip to take a nip. Oh, well, I know all about that. You can oh. take a nip of your nog. I think I'll take a nip <laughs> of my nog right now. You mean no, you're nogging with a nip, with just a nip. That comes from German nippen, which means to sip. Just a Very sip. Good. Just a sip. Not ever doing it, not getting too merry. Yeah, not too merry. We have to figure out if there's a slang way to say gulp. A swig. Swig. A slang. A swig. Now, yeah. Oh, that's just slang. Now it we're up. talking Mary if you take a swig. <laughs> well, we have Amelia who's t uh, tweeting us from. <clears throat> we do get tweets from Los Angeles. That's in our oh, own backyard. Okay. 
I always wonder if it's somebody we know who's hey, playing Amelia. Playing the we joke might be on neighbors. Us. So Amelia says to us, inquire. One of the words we sing in our Christmas music that comes up again and again is ah, this is a good one. Wassail. I feel like everybody must know what it is, but I'm too embarrassed to ask. Is it, so I'm asking. Is it wassail a saint? Saint Wassail? Ah, uh, that. No, I don't. I, I don't know. Or Father? No, it wouldn't be Father Christmas, would well, it? Well. In all my research of etymology, because I, I etymologyed all these different slang terms having to do with Christmas, I did not see that. What I did see was that wassail is actually a verb to wassail. At oh, least in, it's in a Britain. verb. In Britain, you would go wassailing. You would oh, you would you go, wassail. You go singing. You go carol uh, Christmas yes. carols door yes. to door. Yes, in exchange for food. Back in the day, you you would sing for you'd sing for your supper. You'd sing in exchange for food and it's drink. like trick or treating. Trick or treating for the it's, for, it's Christmas <laughs> trick or treating. I love it for for people who drink. Maybe there should be a day, a special day just for that, or maybe it is. Maybe there is one. That's really funny, Christmas. Christmas. I love it. Oh my gosh, and... I want to go with sailing every night. <laughs> I thought you do. Um, okay, on that note. We have also, oh, Janet from Saskatchewan, Canada. Um, oh, okay. Okay, oh, Janet. Canada. Well, let's see. Uh, what are you asking us? Slangman and Monica, for Christmas, I hope you each get a bunny hug. Do you know what that means here in Saskatchewan? A bunny hug? Yes. Oh, a She hopes you each get a bunny hug. Um, When you are all like in your coat and you're all it's it's thick and and you've got this big parka on because you're in Canada and you don't want to freeze to death and then you hug and you're both like distant because you have this like one foot poofy parka on am I way off track here David I'm sorry what oh um you <laughs> I was actually going to tell you to get off the track because I thought you were going in the wrong direction. You <laughs> actually went in the right direction. A bunny hug is a coat that's giving you a bunny hug because it's nice and furry inside. Monica, oh. yeah, but that was the right track. You were on the right train. I was, I was kind of on the right track, huh? You're, but then I kind of went way off. You know, But you just went to a different car in the train, but you got back in the right car. That's that's good. You you. I'm impressed. You're really surprising I'm just me. on fire today. You're on fire. You are fire. I which think is, it's course, because slang. there's a nip You're in the fire. air. <laughs> oh, speaking of the air. Yeah. Paris. Now, night times in Paris are beautiful. So we have here from Christophe in Paris. Um, and, oh, and he, he has a good question for us. Oh, this is funny. Kind of like a bunny hug. Okay, in France, we all wear something during the winter called a hide nose. What do you a call hide, that? A high nose? No, a, a hide. You're hiding. A hide oh, hi. nose. What do you call that in English? A hide nose. I actually know the answer to this. I know what that is. A hide nose. Okay. Is, it, is this to do with food? See, you're back to food. If I said yes, I, w I wonder what you're going to come up with. No, it's actually a garment. So you're cold. It's cold outside. So I'm going to tell you, Monica, it's cold outside. Put on a hide nose. Uh, put on a scarf? Yes, it's a <gasps> scarf. I or totally a, just guessed. Oh, my goodness. Wow. It's a, like, like a muffler, I think we, we say. You know, one of those big scarves that you go whoosh, around your around your face so it hides your nose. That's a hide nose. Hide oh, nose. Put on a hide nose. Put on a scarf. Oh, how? Well, here in California, you know, scarves are just for like decoration. You know, we pretend because it's literally probably 70 outside and I am so cold. Right now you're cold. That's scary, Monica. Super cold. And it's yeah, but you're maybe from 70. Here. Yeah, I know. We're wimps. I'm telling you, if... We are all. I, we talked about that before, especially when it rains. You don't want to be in LA when it rains because we get we, we get nervous. Oh, uh, in get French, he, he says it's called oh a cache nez. Cache is hide, and nez is your nose. Cache nez. So a cache nez. Oh, that sounds so beautiful when you say it, David. It's a, uh, merci, Monica. Why is that? I, it's, you know, it's interesting to me that why is it that French 
sounds so pretty. And Italian sounds happy and wonderful. And and British English. I just heard somebody this morning on BBC say um, something about how he was talking about the air and he called it the air. The <gasps> air. Why is that so pretty to us? It's so pretty. And then when we speak our English to somebody in England, they're like, really? Well, you know, that's funny you should say that because I used pretty. to live in Hawaii. And in Hawaii, a haoli is someone who uh, comes from the mainland and then decides to stay in Hawaii and live there for, you know, many years. And haoli means haoli. short of breath because when the British had the islands, the islanders felt like the British sounded like they were short of breath when they would speak. <laughs> And so that's really? why Ha'uli means short of breath. Isn't that funny? I, lo I love, you know, I love etymology. How long were you in Hawaii? How long did you live there for? Oh, gosh, about almost six years. Okay, then do you know what uh, a sleep, uh, um, uh, oh, speed table is? Speed tailor? Uh, no, speed table. A speed table. I just saw this when I was in Hawaii last year, and I was really surprised. Uh, I have no idea. It's a I, bump in the road. It's a, it's a, what do we call it? A speed bump. A, a speed bump. <laughs> they call it a speed table. Because I saw a big sign that said speed table. I'm thinking, a speed table? I'm going to see a big speeding table cross the road. I better watch out for it. No. It's oh, my a gosh. That's, see? That's funny. I've no, I no, didn't notice that. So you may have maybe been Maybe I was too busy taking a nip when I lived in <laughs> NY. Or being shot into the air because you're going too fast over the speed table. Um, oh, we have <sighs> Shane from Germany. Oh, yeah, Shane. Huh? Um he says here, my host family asked me to trim the Christmas tree, and they got uh -oh. mad at me. Um, I cut the branch. Oh, that's funny. I cut. Uh, I'm not making. We're just having a laugh together, Shane. We're not laughing at you. We're laughing with you. Yeah, we're um, laughing with you. Absolutely. I cut the branches evenly and made it look beautiful, but they were shocked. What does trim the tree mean? To trim a tree. Well, it doesn't mean to literally trim it, cut well, it. Well, it, it can. It depends on the context. Decorate it. Yeah, decorate it. I, I, again, it depends on the context. If you were outside in their backyard and they said, Shane, can you help us trim the tree? Then you wouldn't want to decorate those. You'd want to trim them, make them shorter like you trim hair. But yeah, for Christmas, trim has a different meaning. Isn't that interesting? A word that has a meaning all year, one meaning all year long changes meaning in December. That's That's really interesting. It's amazing, uh, right? Words. Words. So they so morph. They, they morph they, depending on the season. Isn't uh, that crazy? I, I, I love it. In fact, we've got to come up with more of those. I, there's got to be a ton of them. In fact, now my, of course, my brain is spinning. But be, uh, so maybe we'll do an episode on just words that change meaning depending on who's saying them or on the season. That could be an I love it. I up. love it. Let's do it. Let's do so, it. So, Monica, I've got a question for you. Okay. Um, and as you wrap up this one, um, okay, so I know that for Thanksgiving, you eat lasagna, which I think is great. Yeah, now, sometimes we do, because my, my husband's from Brazil, and Brazilians eat a lot of Italian food, and he loves oh, yeah. lasagna. Just like in Argentina, they eat a lot of Italian food. Okay, so I wanted to ask you, because I really don't know the answer to this. So you celebrate Christmas. What do you eat for the holidays? What is the thing you eat? Oh, I'm um, prime rib. Really? Mm -hmm. I want to go to your wait, house. Can't wait. Nom, 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 nom. I want to go to your house. Who makes it? Um, well, sometimes a restaurant, <laughs> 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 and uh, and sometimes my my eighty year old mother will actually uh, cook a prime rib. But you know, it takes a while. You know, it takes a while to to cook because she doesn't like to be in the kitchen like she used to. But so, sometimes but we go out, rib. or she'll make it. And what does she make for dessert? Or what, or what does somebody oh, make for dessert? Oh, pies. What kind of uh, pies? Mince meat pies, which is very English. Mince yes. meat. What is that no really? meat, by the way. No I meat. I was just going to ask you, why is it called mince meat? Because it's it a looks meat, like meat? A fruit. It's fruit meat. It's, oh, it's fruit the meat. flesh of fruit in there, you right? You are doing great. I, mean, I am I am on I'm you are, hitting it you're, today. You are on fire and you are fire, which means in- I am fired are, up and I'm on fire. You are really cool. Well, okay, well then, um, okay, that kind of wraps up this episode of Holiday Slang. But of course, we'll be back next year with more Holiday Slang. That is, if we don't have more things like 
spotted Dick to discuss, and Monica <laughs> gets us thrown off the air in her explanation. Um, um, if you are a non-native speaker of English and you want to know even more slang, have we got something for you. Go to slangman.com, check out my books, and you'll know all the slang that we use on a daily basis. If you're a non-native speaker of English and want to learn even more slang, you've come to the right place. Just go to slangman.com and you can check out all of my books on slang and idioms right now. We hope you'll join us next time as we take another deep dive into the ever-growing, ever-changing world of slang. I am Slangman David Burke. And I'm Monica Mauro. Join Slangman and I next time as we keep slinging the slang. And as you celebrate the holidays, just make sure that you celebrate each other and our slang. Till next week, 